You can watch every single YouTube tutorial, read every documentation or guide on the internet, but until you apply these 5 practical tips, you will hardly improve genuinely as a programming student. Hi everyone, Ralph here. I'm a sophomore student studying information technology, and today I'm going to tell you 5 practical tips that will drastically change the way how you approach learning and programming, and will overall help you to become a better practical programming student. These are tips that I personally use, and you can literally apply them today. So if you're interested, stick around and watch until the end of this video. Tip number one is to apply the 70-30 rule. Your studying routine must be comprised of 70% of hands-on programming and 30% of theoretical studying. Hands-on programming includes testing and debugging source codes, or creating your own program or mini-projects. On the other hand, theoretical studying includes reading and learning about syntax, rules, keywords, definitions, and even PowerPoint slides if you're a student like me. The reason why hands-on programming should take up 70% of your studying is because programming assessments are more focused on problem solving, critical thinking, and application skills. You can spend the whole day reading concepts, terminologies, and definitions, but still suck at programming. You have to realize that it takes way more than just reading the PowerPoint slides, watching YouTube videos, or reading guides from the internet. It takes practice, analyzation, and hands-on experience. You see, we want to have a more practical approach when it comes to computer programming. But sadly, this is what we also commonly ignore. We tend to learn passively by just watching and reading, when in reality, we must also engage in active learning through hands-on coding and debugging scenarios. Like, even if you memorize and understand every single terminology, definition, structure, and syntax of a programming language, you're still going to have a hard time when you're asked to create a program or an algorithm, or when you're asked to debug and determine the output of a particular code snippet. You will only learn a programming language completely when you've actually written and tested codes using it. It's okay to read, understand, and memorize programming concepts, but don't just stop there. Test the program. Understand the flow, the logic, the syntax of the source code. Learn actively and not passively, and incorporate what you've learned practically. Tip number two is to use print statements. It's very hard to follow and understand a source code if you can't see an output or display in real time. You can try and guess what would be the output of a variable, the flow or logic of a program, and the causes of errors in your code, but it's going to be very frustrating and very difficult. By using print statements, it allows us to verify an output, visibly observe a variable, and track potential errors in our program for debugging. Say for example, there's a block of code in your program that doesn't execute, or an if condition that your program can't reach. If we don't use print statements, we won't even know if we enter the code blocks in our program. It would just simply run and terminate at the end. There's a possibility that our program will close or terminate without even executing the line of code that we want to execute. This is why it's very helpful to include print statements for each code block when observing or debugging a source code. We can visually tell when we entered a code block just by looking at the terminal or console. From there on, we can identify the problem, formulate solutions, and create adjustments accordingly. Print statements are also very helpful when it comes to identifying the contents of an array. You can use a for loop that increments from index 0 up to the maximum index size of the array, which prints each individual element every iteration or every time you insert an element. Alternatively, you can use an enhanced for loop or also known as the for each loop to grab every element in an array to be displayed every iteration. Lastly, you may encounter wrong or inconsistent output despite having the correct logic or syntax. For example, my logic for determining whether a number is even or odd is correct. However, despite having the correct logic, my output seems to be inconsistent or even wrong because I expect that the value in my number variable to be even. This is most likely caused by the dynamic changes to the variable during runtime which can vary depending upon the user input or random processes in the source code. To really see what is happening with our number variable, we can use a print statement to validate its value. Upon checking, we have determined that our variable actually undergoes changes contrary to what we were expecting. It becomes an odd number due to dynamic and random processes in the program. From this, we can deduct that there must be a block of code that changes our variable during runtime, to which we can apply necessary adjustments accordingly. 
This is actually my favorite tip that I always use every single time that I do programming. I tend to lose track of the flow or the logic of my source code whenever I'm programming. But by using print statements, it helps me validate the output and observe the variables in real time. So if you're someone like me who really needs visualization, someone who needs to see an output, I highly recommend that you apply this tip the next time you do programming. Tip number three is to debug using stack traces. Basically, stack traces tells you what line in your code an exception or an error has occurred. I guarantee you that you've seen countless of these ever since you start programming, so don't you dare lie to yourself. These could range from three to six lines up to an entire wall or essay of errors and stack traces. This is actually very helpful when you're trying to debug a program because you're actually receiving a specific error message that identifies a particular kind of error that you have and in what light it occurred. However, there are times where the stack traces that we get is not that descriptive. All you get is an error message and nothing else, which means it doesn't really have a meaning. It doesn't necessarily tell you what the error means or what is the cause of that error. Which is why you should copy the stack trace into Google so that you'll know what the error means. Stack traces is one of the key components in debugging. That's why you must understand how to identify, search, and analyze them. It's just that sometimes you have to first search the error in Google in order to give it meaning and for you to make necessary adjustments in your source code. Tip number four is to be resourceful. One key trait of a successful programmer is the ability to use different tools and resources in order to solve problems, create algorithms, and find solutions for a program. For example, you can use Google if you don't know how to sort an array or if you want to know the logic and syntax behind bubble sorting. All you literally have to do is to open Google and type in what you wish to accomplish in your program. For example, bubble sort Java. Immediately, we were bombarded with numerous options and references that we can use in studying bubble sorting and its application. There are tons of coding websites like geeks for geeks Java Point, and Free Code Camp, which provides theoretical explanation on how the algorithm works logically. They also provide source codes that you can copy and paste in your own machine to try and test it out for yourself. You can also use YouTube to search for a particular topic that you want to learn visually and thoroughly. For example, if you want to learn object-oriented programming in Java, all you have to type in is Java objects and you'll be met with a handful of options just like in Google. Lastly, for the ultimate website which contains numerous forums and discussions about problems in programming, including topics about logic, syntax, and debugging, we have Stack Overflow. This is a forum website that you will come across often when asking Google for questions related to programming. The community in this website is very informative and they provide in-depth feedback when it comes to questions and discussions. These are just some of the numerous resources and tools that you can use for references. There's so much more on the internet and I highly encourage you to explore further and discover more resources and tools for yourself. And for tip number 5, get some sleep. There's nothing worse than trying to debug an error for 3 straight hours with little to no progress while you're sleep deprived. I've literally had a handful of times where I sat down for 2 or more hours trying to debug my source code. I would sit and code with no rest up until the point where I start to get so frustrated because my program just wouldn't run. Or at times where the output is inconsistent so I had to remake the logic and syntax 8 to 15 times and still not solve the problem. But then I realized that when I wake up the following day, it's like I already know the solution. As if I debugged the program while I was yeah. sleeping. I'm telling you, like, it happens all the time. As if there's this revelation or enlightenment that happens whenever I wake up. My theory is that the longer we spend time programming with no rest, the more fatigue that accumulates over time which eventually hinders our logic and problem solving skills. Think of your brain just like that of a muscle. Prolonged work of a muscle causes lactic acid to build up over time which makes your muscle fatigue. The same goes for our brain. Our prolonged thinking as well as the prolonged work of our cognitive brain muscles causes stress build up over time which makes us experience attention fatigue, logical and problem solving fatigue. So my advice is, if you've been coding for hours on end and you still haven't found a solution while debugging your source code, I highly recommend that you take a rest and put it off for the next day. There's no point of working hard if you won't make any progress. It's better that you spend those remaining hours of the day resting or doing something completely different. 
We're not giving up or admitting defeat. We're simply doing a tactical retreat. If you've made this far on the video, I have to commend you because you're spending time to actively try and improve in programming and not everyone is willing to do that. Feel free to leave a comment down below on what you think about these tips, suggestions that you may have, or anything really. If you found this video helpful, consider subscribing to my channel for future content related to computers, self-improvement, and documentations. Also, you can support me by liking this video for the YouTube algorithm, by sharing this video to your friends, and by following my socials on the description down below. I really hope that you can apply at least one of these tips that I've provided you with, and until the next video, I'm out. See ya!